welcome to Agape Christian Fellowship Church uh, midweek service. I want to first let me tell you that I appreciate these moments to be with you, the opportunity to share with you a special night tonight. You drew me tonight, and so I get to uh, share the word with you twice. Get to, I'll get to minister to you today, and as well as I also want to remind you we have a prayer line. That number is 346-330. 2330. Again, I want to tell you that uh, uh, we're making things happen. Stuff is happening here at the Agape. As you can see, uh, as, I t as I told you, there were going to be some changes, uh, major changes when you got here. And as you can see, there's some major changes. I wish I could let you back there, all of you back there, and let you and just show you uh, what's going on back there. But I can tell you, they're almost through with the first phase, the first and second phase of that. They're almost finished with it. And so it is amazing that uh, what we were able to do, what we're able to do, but we're not through yet. And the uh, total project won't be finished till we're assuming, well, actually August when everything will be done, but uh, you'll see all of that by June. And so uh, uh, keep giving because your giving is making this happen. As uh, I would want to say that when we give, we don't give because uh, I pray you don't give for projects to a project. I pray you give because uh, you understand whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. And as, as Paul said, do it heartily unto God and not unto man. And so I pray that you understand that tithes and offering and gifts of love, that is a way of honoring our God. It's letting know that it's proving that Jesus is alive and proving that we trust him uh, with our resources. Also, I want to remind you uh, that on this coming Saturday, we're going to have food distribution. I want to, we need help, uh, as always, to participate with this. We need individuals to come in to package food up as well as to serve. And then this coming Sunday is our seniors' breakfast. And so if you're 65 and old, over, arrive at 830 and we'll be ha happy to serve you. Also, you Q&A breakfast at 9 a.m. on this coming, uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, Jam, Jesus and Me, Tuesday, April 23rd at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And then I want to remind you, of course, I, uh, it's unusual for me to say this, but to remind you, next Sunday, can you say next Sunday? Next Sunday, next Sunday is Shepherd's Day. And that's the, at 9 a.m. It'll be here at the Agape. Uh, Pastor Fl Lonnie L. Flanagan will be our speaker. He has a special uh, guest who will be doing ministry that day along with him. So I want to encourage you to, uh, encourage you to participate uh, in that. That's a way that you're saying uh, that you trust my leadership and that you believe that I'm leading you in the right way and, you, uh, and, and honoring me. It is a, it is, did you know that, that when you show honor, you show respect? And so that I appreciate, Deb and I appreciate anything that you do. We will receive anything that you do. It's uh, so late. Uh, so we trust you that you'll seek God about what your seed should be on that day. Uh, also, uh, Designing Women, just want to mention this to you, Designing Women. Uh, don't forget uh, to mark your calendars. Uh, for the May Fellowship Tea Party, May 11, 11 a.m. here at the Agape. Special guest, Rochelle Dixon. Rochelle Dixon, special guest. So please sign up in the lobby. And then the retreat for uh, October 10 through 13, balance due on uh, Wednesday, uh, July 31st. I'll bring up the rest of uh, our announcements after I finish sharing with you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege that you have given to us. We thank you for the opportunity to share that that you have sown into my heart, that the people of God are open and receptive to receive what you want to speak into, the, into their lives, that the word that will be spoken will change, will be life-altering, altering, will change destiny, will change our trajectory in you because of the word that we hear and receive here today, here in Jesus' name. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you let me down in the hidden mysteries of your word by bringing everything.
that you have taught me back to my remembrance. Let me share with simplicity, clarity, and accuracy that the people of God may be blessed, inspired, motivated, uh, and encouraged to do all that you have called them to do. And we'll be careful to honor you and give your name to praise in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. And I kind of wanted to uh, uh, go back to and finish some stuff uh, uh, that I had begun, but I'm going to bring in some new information starting tonight. And that, and that, uh, that I, you know, I was talking to you about uh, uh, last time I told you uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> and so, and so the emphasis was a lot on, on what you've been saying, what we have been saying, and that how what we say affects how we're going to live. And so that, but see, it affects how we're going to live, and what we say affects how other people are going to live around us. So uh, that, <clears throat> but I want to take it a step further, because I started there, but I'm going to take it a step further for tonight and tomorrow, and I'm, talk, and I'm going to talk about believing in impossible stuff. Believe, believing when it, when it doesn't seem like it's possible. Certainly, you know, a lot of things that I say around here, uh, when I can make confessions, when I speak vision, a lot of things that I say around here, when you look around, you think, well, how is he going to do that? Well, I'm not trying to do it by myself. Yeah. Are you listening to me? I'm, not, I'm never trying to do it by myself. I understand that I cannot do it by myself. I understand I need the help. We used to, they used to say the help of the Lord. I understand that I need God's help to get done anything that I need to do. And so I'm always putting my trust in him so that when I pronounce things to you, when I declare a vision to you, what I'm actually doing is framing my expectations with the words that are coming out of my mouth. Hebrews 11.3 says we understand that the that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, that everything that did appear were made of things which did not appear, that God caused stuff to come into existence out of empty stuff, stuff that, that there was nothing present that showed that it was going to be there or that it should be there. Now, now uh, what I'm going to illustrate to you tonight is how that you may be facing some, some uh, issues that are in your current life now where that you've been told, you have seen, that ain't nothing, going, ain't nothing coming of this, or it's too late, as in the case with the, with the woman, with the, as in the case with, uh, with Jairus' daughter, Jairus and his daughter, that uh, he asked Jesus to come and heal his daughter. And when Jesus started on his way, he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood. And, and so after he healed that woman and he started to proceed toward Jairus' house, uh, one of his servants came to him and said, trouble the master no more. Your daughter's already dead. Listen to that. Don't bother them now. It's too late. Yeah, yeah. Don't bother them. Don't bother them now. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. And so I don't know if you ever heard that. I heard that one time, heard that, heard that, that, that spoken, say it's too late. And, and one step of obedience caused to what to be what I thought was too late to be activated. Amen. Amen. I thought it was too late, but just one step of obedience, just, one to, just doing one thing that I was told to do caused it to be activated. And so the next point that I want to say Believing is connected to your obedience. That, that you can't just say, I believe, and then don't do what, what you believe. Or you can't say, I believe, and don't do what God has placed in your heart to do. You can't do that. Yeah. You know, you have, to, you have to decide that whatever God tells me to do, whatever, however he instructs me to do. And remember, a few weeks ago, weeks ago I told you how God talks to you. Mm -hmm. And that that he may not come to you and speak to you by some great oration and saying, saying to you, thou shalt, it's not like uh, the Ten Commandments, that movie Ten Commandments, God don't talk to people like that. Yeah. He, you, know, he, you know that Moses, he ain't going to say, he's not going to say Patrick. He's not going to say that. It's not how he's going to come to you, he's going to say, but, he, but what, he will, what he may do 
as he'll speak to you in a still small voice or in an inkling or, or that, or a, now, a sense or a feeling that, man, I need, to, I need to go this way. I need to do that. And sometimes when, when those thoughts come to our mind, we attribute it to, well, uh, well, you know, I, I'm just going to do like I want to do and do it, do it, do what I want to do anyway. And then when we do that and something go awry, the first thing that comes out of our mouth is, you know, I should have followed my first mind. Yeah. I, you know, I should have, because your first mind was God speaking to you and giving you instruction yeah. and telling you what you need to do. Right. But you got to believe that God will speak to you and that you got to believe when God does speak to you enough to do what he says. He says, Paul says, he is the rewarder. That he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder. And in addition to believing that he exists, but you must believe that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Those who are persistent, those who keep coming. Like uh, Pastor Allen said, you know, that uh, you may think that going to God for the same thing over and over and over and over again is laborsome. And to, that you're tiring God out. No, you're not tiring God out. But you need to keep saying that thing because every time you say something, every time you speak something in faith, it becomes more and more in, fo more and more in focus in your life. It starts to begin to appear. Sometimes you can speak things in faith and it'll pop just like that. And other times it take a while for it to draw focus. You know, that uh, I remember we had this Polaroid land camera and I had 35 millimeter. And then, you know, now we got digital. Yeah. But when we had the uh, Polaroid land camera that you would take a picture and when you would take a picture uh, that you pull it off and pull the tab off and then set it down, set, set the uh, uh, picture down and then watch it come into focus. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes when you are, when you are praying and you believing, you releasing your faith to something, you have to, once you say it, put it down let it come into focus yeah. till you see the image that you were, you were praying for. Yeah. Other times when, when you're doing like with the, with the iPhones and so on, when you take a picture immediately, you see what you, uh, what you took a picture of. Yeah. And so now you have to understand it doesn't always operate like that. And it, it's different for different people. Yeah. That is, the, you know, just because, you know, certain acts or certain things happen with me, doesn't, it, it doesn't mean it's going to happen the same way with you. God is the same. He is the same. He is no respect of person, but he deals with us differently. He yeah. says, I know the thoughts I think to you. I got plans for you, yeah. but the plans that God has for me may not be the same plans that he has for you. Right. Yeah. But, but both plans, when he assembles us together in a house of worship, both plans ultimately work for his good. That, that he'll put us together so that, your, so that the plan he placed in your life and the plan he placed in my life may ultimately work for the greater good in somebody else's life. Right. Ooh, that's preaching word right yeah. there. That, that, that's preaching ter territory. So I, I wrote this statement down. Just because it, it doesn't exist don't mean it's impossible. Uh -huh. yeah. not, does not mean the condition is impossible. Um, um, says uh, Romans 8 and 11 says but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you that same the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus that raised him up from the dead is in you to turn dead stuff to live stuff Stuff that looks like it's gone is to no hope. And what, what I'm speaking to are hopeless situations yeah. that you think it's over. And I'm telling you, it's not over. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. You should look at your neighbor at home. You should look at your neighbor and tell them, it's not over yet. Amen. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. Amen. It's not done yet. M my mama used to make a, she used to, a uh, long time ago, you know, uh, she would bake these cakes and she would bake a, a trial cake. If you know what I'm talking about, I just dated you. But she would put it in a skillet. And she, you know, she'd make a pound cake, a, a, a cake with icing, and she'd make a trial cake. And this, you know, the trial cake was real small. It was, it, was, it was real, real small. And so she would bake it, 
and it would be in the skillet, and when she take it out of the skillet, she stick something in it to see if it was if 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 it was done. And then you know, and she would give us a little piece of it to taste it to see see how it tasted, see how it was. And she did that, and listen to this. She did that before she put the rest of the batter into the pan to make the real cake. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so some things, uh, some things for you are trial, mm -hmm. trials that you have to endure before the full cake is developed in your life. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Right. That is good. Man, I, I need to pat myself on the back for that. Yeah. That, 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 that is good. Romans 4.17 said, 4, says, as it is written, I have made thee father of many nations. Now, you got to remember that God told Abraham this, uh, and it started in uh, uh, Genesis 12, and he said, get thee out of thy country and get from thy father's house into a land that I'll tell you. He said, and I'll make your name great, and I'll make you a blessing, and I'll bless those that bless you, and I'll curse those that curse you, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And then Abraham was left with a dominion, uh, a decision. Uh, he could believe what God was telling him about going somewhere with no idea where he was going. It seemed like it was a waste of time. And he just told him, look, just, just go. And he said, he said, and when you get there, I'll tell you you arrive. arrive. Yeah. Now, think, think about this. You going down the road on your way somewhere, have no idea where you're going, and you waiting on God to tell you when to stop, when, when, to, when, to, when to stop, you have to really, really believe God and his word. You have to believe that God's plan, he has plans for you. You have to believe that he has, he is, that he doesn't intend to hurt you. You have to believe that he's working things for your good in order to trust him to do that, yeah. that if he tells you to do something, it may, look, it may look abstract to you when he tells you, oh, God, I've seen so many things that so many times that God has given Deb and I some instruction. And when he told it to us, it looked like, well, how are we going to, yeah. <laughs> how are you going to, how are you going to do this? How you, uh, how does a hundred dollars turn into 10,000? Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, how does, how does a hundred dollars uh uh, turn into a drop in interest rate, uh, drop in, drop, uh, a $600 a month drop in a house payment. How does that happen? How does that happen? But on the surface that when you're told to do it and you, you think, and, and oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, and the way he usually tells you to do it is when it's all you got? Okay, okay. And, and so I liken that to he got, uh, will give us instruction well, we have no ability to go back. Let me try that again. You have no ability to go back because you gave all. You gave your last. You gave your last. And so you get, that's what first fruit is about. So it's, it's, it's I'm giving all that I have and trusting him. I have no ability to go back. I can't go back and do something different because the resources that I had, he's told me to give it away. He, he, you know, I can't, I can't go back and change the, the children of Israel. He told them, uh, go on on across uh, the Red Sea. And then when they went down after they crossed, I'm telling the short version because I don't have a lot of time. And when they went across, and went, uh, went across the Red Sea, Pharaoh's armor came behind them. And so, uh, and so when, they, when they came behind them, they got across on dry land and then God closed up the sea yep. on their enemy. In other words, what he did, two things he did. He wiped away their debt because they pillaged the, the Egypt when they left. Mm -hmm. And the second thing he did is he placed them in a position where they could not return. Yeah. Wow. Right, wow. right. Mm -hmm. you, you, you couldn't go back. So, so that, that's, and, and to do that, to be willing to do that and to understand that's what he's doing, yeah. you have to really believe God. Yeah. You, you, have to, you have to really believe him. He said... So it says, it says that before him whom, verse, verse 17, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead uh, makes the dead come alive. And that this is the part I like. C-A-L-L-E-T-H means keep calling mm -hmm. those things which be not 
as though they were. So God will look at your closed in situation and say it's open. I want to say how many of you ever faced that? He'll look at, he'll create something. I remember you telling me about, uh, about God creating uh, when you were ready to take off, and now you've been there almost 40 years. And now, and how that God created a position for you that didn't exist. Look at that. He, 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 he rearranged the organizational chart to, it was set up one way, but he rearranged it so he could drop him in. Good Lord. Good Lord. Think about that. Whatever God has to do to get it to you, he'll rearrange it to make sure that it gets to you. God, God, and I'm looking forward to some more of that. That's some, now, that's encouraging. So because what that tells me is that no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I see, no matter what I'm looking at, no matter how bad it looks, no matter, so, which is the reason, uh, yes, uh, you know, the economic situation in this country, uh, you know, we're being told that it's bad, but it's not. The immigration ish situation in this country, we're being told that it's bad, but it's no different than it always been. Mm -hmm. It's not. It, you know, it's, it's, try, it's, it's being promulgated a certain way in order to sway your belief, to get you to believe yeah. that it's hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. Get you to believe it and that somehow... Uh, the other guy is going to come on on a white charger and rescue us. Mm -hmm. well, well, he had the white charger when he was in office four years, mm -hmm. and he didn't rescue us. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, he sent us further. And I'm not calling a name because I found out Facebook, you know, if you start saying certain things that they want to they they close you off. So, but you know, yeah, wow. you, you know, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, so that God will call, he will call, call it, and call it means he speaks what doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Call it, you don't say call, C-A-U-S-E, C-A-U-S-E-T-H, cause it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said call it, C-A-L-L-E-T-H, which means calling, speaking. Mm -hmm. He call it those things. He calls what's not there mm -hmm. as though it was. In the beginning, when God created the earth, heaven and the earth, it said that the earth was void. It said it was void. Void means empty. It wasn't nothing there. And so God, it was dark, and it was void. And so God saw darkness and said, let there be light. So what he did, what did not exist, he called it into existence. You get it? He called it into existence. Uh, Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians 4.13, we have in the same spirit, which is also in Christ Jesus. We, we have the same spirit of faith, which is also in Christ Jesus, which means that Jesus who was there when God created the heavens and the earth, that same spirit that is in him, that is in our Father God, is also in us. Amen. Because Jesus resides on the inside of us. And so we have the ability to call, C-A-L-L-E-T-H, keep calling what doesn't exist, exist as though it were. Now watch, it says, call it those things as though they were. You got to get that as though. Mm -hmm. As though. That as though, and I never saw this revelation before, but it's as though. He don't say, call it those things that be not to be. He says, call it those things to be not. Look at your Bible. It says, call it those things to be not as though they were. He called what doesn't exist to be as though it exists. Right, right. He says it. He says it. He, he just, and all he does is say it. All I have to do is say it. You mean that my words can transform what's going on in my life? Absolutely. Boy, and I'm telling you, that, that is not what I heard. It's what I know yeah. through practical experience. Yeah. I know. I know it worked. I know it worked. Uh, I said to you, when I pray for people, uh, people ask me to pray for them. When I pray for them and they're sick, I expect them to get well. It's, it's not, you know, it, that's not an issue for me. I'm not thinking, Lord, now I hope that prayer works. That's not what I think. 
when I pray for you, you're sick, and I pray for you, and I pray for many of you. And when I pray for you, I expect you to be well. When I hang out, you call me. I'm talking to you, and I pray for you. Or you text me, and I say a prayer uh, on, my, on the text line. And uh, you email me, and I say a prayer on the email. And so when I pray for you, I'm not just calling words. Uh, in the, at two, four, two, let's see, two, four, six in the morning, when I pray for you, or one, three, and five in the morning, whichever way the Holy Spirit choose to get, get me up to do it. When I pray for you and your face comes before me and you become a burden to my heart and I start calling, I call your name and pray in the spirit because not all the time does God tell me what's going on in you. But what I know is this, if he laid your face before me and he made you a burden in my heart, he's telling me to pray for you or make declarations on your behalf or call what be not as though it were by praying in the Holy Spirit. When I get through praying, I expect it to be okay. And so I'm starting to walk up to you and say, are you all right? And you're wondering, everything fine. What are you asking me that for? I had a situation like that. I asked a, uh, asked a couple that, you know, and every time I would see them, are you okay? Is everything okay? Because for six months, they became a burden to me. And what happened is uh, six months later, they got burnt out. They got burnt out, had a faulty wire in the house. They left. And after they left, the house burned down. Now, they lost everything except their lives. And I believe, I believe, I believe that four day in the morning praying, four day in the morning praying, praying in the spirit on their behalf, calling. I didn't know what it was about. I just pray in the spirit. I believe that what was, I believe it, that what was going on, that God was preserving their life. And then they recovered all. Amen. Amen. So God is not going to let the enemy take anything away from you that he don't restore to you. All that stuff that happened to Job, Job got twice back. Yes. Now, you know, I don't know whether it got two, two times the kids. I don't remember where it says that. I wouldn't, you know, that, uh, you know, I could take, uh, uh, I can take double oxen and double donkeys. And you know what? That's not what it says. You know what I want to say, you know, and, and double sheep and, and double cattle. I can take all that, but I don't know about no double kids. He had seven kids. I don't think I would want 14 more. Uh. It says, it says uh, he calls those things to be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope? Who against everything that he saw and knew believed? Hope is anticipation that something is coming to pass. That once it's there, you no longer have to hope. Mm -hmm. I don't have to hope for nothing if, it's, if I already got it. I only have to hope for what's not there. Uh -huh. And so, so against hope. So what, what was it? His hope against hope said, his body and his wife's body said, there ain't no hope. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing, ain't nothing happening here. There ain't no hope. I don't care what God said to you. And then what, watch this. What God did is changed his name from Abram to Abraham, father of nations, father of many nations. He changed his name to Abraham so that every time Abraham heard his name, he heard father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Every time. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you say about your kids, instead of saying you ain't never going to amount to nothing. Imagine if you say about your kids, you're going to be the greatest. You're going to be, you're going to be. I tell you, that affects them. It affects them. You start telling them, you know, and they start believing that. Uh, start believing, you know, that uh, I remember uh, uh, my wife used to say, say this about me all the time. She used to call me a hero, and she used to talk about how smart I was. And when she first said that, when she first said that, I thought she was just messing with it. And then after a while, I started listening to it. You know what? I started believing that. <laughs> I, st I started believing that, hey, hey I'm a hero. Yeah, I'm a hero. And so I started believing that I was her hero, and I started believing that I was really smart. And you know what? I became smart. <laughs> so, so, 
So but that, that, that she kept saying it, she kept saying it. See, you, you know that, that, that if, if I, thank God that you don't know me the way I was when I first got married. See, you, you didn't know that I was, I was doing your sister that way. But thank God y'all didn't knew, know me. Like, and it was the grace of God who put her with me to be able to withstand my growth period. Because that's all that was going on is God was maturing me. And so while, you know, when you, when you are, uh, when you developing in your belief system, you're going to go through some pains. It's going to, some days it's going to hurt. Boy, it's going to hurt. You gonna, and, and what I mean by hurt is you're not going to see how it's going to happen. You're not going to understand. You're not going to understand how it's going to happen. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter whether you understand it. Somewhere I got that down here in a note and a verse that if I get to it, I only have 10 minutes. But I got down here that just because you don't see it don't mean it doesn't exist. It, uh, just because you don't see it, it doesn't mean it, you can call what doesn't exist as though it, as though it were. But, Pastor, you just saying, see, I heard that for years. I heard that name and claim. I didn't say nothing about name and claiming. I didn't say nothing about that. I said, you can call, you can speak a thing like Pastor Allen was saying. You got to keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it. Because you have to keep saying it till it gets inside of you, woven into the fabric of who you are. Because at that point, you believe what you're saying. Once you believe what you're saying, can't nobody take it away from you. You can't nobody take away from me how good God has been to me. You can't take it away. Because I didn't seen it. I didn't seen it. I didn't seen it. I've seen it. I've seen God, the, the favor of God. I've seen how good God has been. That, and, and that not all the time did I understand why. I didn't always understand why. I didn't always understand where. I didn't understand, understand how. I didn't always understand how he was going to do it. That, that how he tells you to do something and it looks stupid. Jump up and down. He tell you to jump up and down and your leg is hurting. He tell you to jump up and down and your leg is hurting. So you're thinking, but Lord, if I jump up and down, my leg going to hurt. No, he's telling you to jump up and down till your leg stop hurting. Amen. So, you can, so you can see it stop it. Call it those things that be not as though it were. That he might become the father of many nations according that which was spoken. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being weak, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That means he didn't doubt what God said. Now, watch, now, now you got to pay attention to this because what he's saying is, this man is 100 years old. And physically, he should not be able to have another child. His wife is 75 years old. And physically, she should not be able to have any other children. But he believed that his expect- expectation was in what God said, regardless of what his eyes was telling him. And so, so he just, every time he heard his name, Abraham, huh? Every time he heard that, father of many nations, huh? Every time he heard that. Do you know my name means leader, ruler? Every time you call my name, so I, I wish y'all start calling me Ricky now instead of stop, stop calling me bishop and pastor. You know, they just call me Ricky now. And so because every time you say that, every time you say Ricky, every time you say, every, every time you say Ricky, you're saying Ruler, leader, and y'all know how I like to tell. You know, I don't. I like y'all know how I like to. Y'all think I like to give orders. Yeah, you, you know how y'all think I like to get. He said, and being fully persuaded, and and be, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, He was also able to perform it. God is able to do exactly what he says he says he's going to do. You can rely on it, his word. He said to Balaam, Balaam, Balak, God is not a man that he should lie. That 
because you know what that was about? That uh, Balaam, uh, God sent Israel through the land. And uh, he sent Balak, I think I got the right one, Balaam. He sent Balaam to curse Israel. Mm -hmm. Sent Balaam to curse Israel. When he went, watch this. When he went, his mouth could even be, his mouth would even fix or say curse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. let, let me try it again. He went to curse the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And when he went to curse them, instead of curse, blessing came out of his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't do it. And so, and so when Balaam, I think I got it, I get them confused whether it's Balaam or Balak, and what, what Balaam said, uh, Balak said, you know, I sent you down to curse them, and now you, they, they're blessed more than, any, more than they ever were. <laughs> and then he, Balaam said, well, God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. Neither is uh, the son of man that he should repent. He said, had he not said it, shall he not spoken it, shall he not bring it to pass? Whatever God has declared. Now, that means that every word that God has ever spoken in your life mm -hmm. is going to happen. Yes, amen. Every word. Now, okay, but, but I've been waiting 10 years. So, mm -hmm. the woman with the issue of blood had been waiting 12. Yeah. Bartimaeus had been waiting 38 years. 38 years. And so, that, that so what? You ought not to care how long it takes, yeah. just so it takes. Mm -hmm. That's where I am. You know, I don't care. So, you know, that uh, uh, I see, seen in the last couple, couple of years, that when I saw vision, saw what I wanted to do, I did not see how we were going to do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't see, but I knew God told me to do it. That's all I had. God told me to do it. That's all I had. Listen to this. All I had was God said it. Yeah. All that, that's all I had. I ain't had nothing else. I didn't have the money. Back then, I didn't have the credit. Man, I remember when my credit was 465. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, 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 that's bad credit. <laughs> That I remember when it's in there. It ain't 465 today, but I, I remember when it was 465. I, I remember when I go to try to get it. I, I go to try to get something on credit, man. They look at me like. And if they would give me something on credit, it had this crazy interest rate. Cra crazy interest rate. Today, because, because my score is very high. Very high. Because it's so high. I mean, we're almost in the eights now. And because my score is so high now, you know, if they don't want to, you know, they try to give me a high interest rate, and I don't like it. I tell them, you know, I'm going somewhere else. It's a big difference when you know God's favor is on you, where you could tell somebody who tried to hold back on you, well, you know, it's all right. You don't have to give it to me. Go, go ahead on, play it. Go ahead on, go ahead on. You don't have to give me nothing. You don't have to give me nothing. I'm moving over here. That's why, you know, you know, that, that I, you know about certain issues, you know, I want to be petty. Because, you know, I want to be, be petty about certain issues, and I keep being told, don't rob your blessing that God had given to you. I just want to, you know, some folk did some stuff and tried some stuff, and God called us to overcome, and I want to go back and say, yeah, that's what I want to do. I, I want to do. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what I want to do. I want to I wanna go. I want to. Okay. 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 Yeah. None of y'all ever felt like that. I want, I want, I want to do it. Yeah, you know, hey, I don't want to be grown up all my life, all the time. I want to be bishop all the time. Sometimes I want to be childish. I want to be pedantic. Sometimes I want to be. Sometimes I want to act like a, act like a little boy. And I'm telling you, there's, there's some. Stuff that was done that, man, I want to go back to him and tell him, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, you thought you, yeah, you thought. But then, you know what, I realize that feeling like that and being like that may be tied up in pride. Okay, I said maybe. I didn't say it was. I said maybe. I mean, but, but I tell you what, if I did it, I, I think I would feel so good if I was able to 
to do it. But sometimes God is not leading you to the place where you can feel good, but he's leading to you to the place where you can do good. And so, so that now that I'm almost out of time, God, God Almighty, uh, in the voice that last Porter says, in spite of all this, his faith in God's promise did not falter. In fact, his faith grew as he gave glory to God, as he kept giving God credit for what he was doing, yeah. because he was supremely confident that, what, that God could deliver on his promise. Mm. God can deliver. Yeah. God will deliver on what he said. Can, can, you, can you imagine that? I can rely on a dream that God places in my heart. I can rely on a, a vision that God places in my heart. I can rely on an idea God places in my heart. I'm sure those first seven years the devil was married to, married to me. She was saying, thinking to herself, Lord, what have I done that you punishing me like this? But today she's saying, Lord, I know what I did to be blessed like this. I got my honey and my suckle. So, so, so that, that she, that today, that today, you know, hey, you know, seven years of Hell and 44 years of bliss. So 44 years, I weighed seven years, and so it's a whole lot better now than it was when we first started out. So, but, you know, again, see, 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 I want to tell you, see, God was helping you. He was helping you. He, he was taking you through a wilderness so you could appreciate what you got now. So I want to... <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this thought. Leave you with this thought. because I'll try to pick this up because I didn't get very far. It said, just, I put, wrote this statement, just because it looks like nothing has happened doesn't mean something is not happening. Change your words from despair to encouragement with your own words for your own self. Start encouraging yourself. Stop waiting on somebody else to pat you on the back. Pat your own self on the back. Let's start talking about, yeah, like that. So start talking about, you know, start talking about, uh, look in the mirror and talk about what a great person you are. You know, I, you know that I used to, because I had, you know, I got a little girth here in the, you know, because I remember when I married Deborah, I was 145 pounds. I still weigh 145 pounds. It's in there. I still weigh 145 pounds. It's in there. And so, and I didn't want to look at myself. Didn't, didn't want to look at myself because, you know, I would look at myself and get disappointed. I'd be working out and exercising, and it didn't look like nothing was changing. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Didn't look like nothing was going. I'm, I'm closing now. I'd, I'd be getting in the pool and swimming and doing 20 laps in the morning and 20 laps at night. I'd be walking four miles a day. It didn't look like nothing was changing. It didn't look like nothing was going on. I'd get on the scale, and sometimes the scale looked like it went up and didn't go down. I'd be over at the Y, and I'd be lifting weights. And I had got myself up to uh, 235, lifting, bench pressing, lifting the incline, de it's the incline, decline, and, and then just straight bench pressing. And I was just working myself, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning, going over there and working out for an hour and a half, and I was doing it five days a week, walking four miles a day. 20 miles a week. I was doing all of that stuff and didn't look like anything was working. And then one day I put on my clothes. One day I put on my clothes. I didn't see the weight fall, but I saw the inches come off. Amen. And what, what I thought wasn't going on was happening all the time. All the time. Yep. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to cooperate with you and experience the blessing of, from you in and through your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the opportunity to minister to the people of God. I pray that they receive and are encouraged, they, that they are changing their dialogue, what they say about themselves and about others, that they're speaking what they want instead of what they see, declaring the end from the beginning. Father, I thank you that this word will saturate all of our hearts. And, and, and as um, Pastor, uh, and Pastor Thompson said, that what we didn't believe, we start to believe. We believe you because your word is sure. 
that you will never, never back up on your word, that it, everything that you ever promised will come to pass. Joshua said all his days, you, he never saw one word that God ever spoken fail. We believe that, Father, that not one word that you've ever spoken will fail. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter how you're going to do it. We believe you in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen. amen. Well, I want to remind you, don't forget, if you haven't already given, to you can present your tithe offering and gifts of love and your over and above giving. As you can see, it's working. Uh, I may let uh, those of you who are here, I may let you, let you peep behind the, behind the curtain let you people, I was just letting the board do it, so, but I may let you peek behind the curtain if you want to. You can't go back. I don't want you to go back there because I don't want you, you know, it's, it's, everything is rough, but you can see it's coming together. It's a vision. It's a vision. Check this out. I had a vision of what I wanted. I told Ben what I wanted. Ben drew it. Check it out. Check it out. He drew what I said. Ben, you ought to give me a high five, but you, you ought to give me a high five. I said it, and he drew it. And you, you, you take a look back there and see. It ain't finished yet, so, you know, just it's, see, it's still coming in focus. Still coming in focus. So, so I want to encourage you to support, uh, support the ministry, tithe offering, gifts of love, and, uh, and uh, over and above giving. That soon we're going to be, we order the chairs, they got to be paid for. And so, that ain't, it ain't that much money, you know. That we we like uh, Pastor um, Pastor Torres said, we need to think in X. So what's twenty thousand dollars? What's that to God? Now, didn't say you had to do it. We gonna do it. Amen. We gonna do it. And so now you can if you want to. I have no problem, you know. Uh, when we got that, that truck out there, the dealer asked us, uh, how many payments you want? I said, one. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's because that's what I'm, because I'm going to Thomas this Sunday and show you, you know, no matter what you say, I'm just not going to believe it. He couldn't believe it. He said, uh, he said, how many payments? I said, one. No, no, how many months? No, I don't know months. I want one payment. Do you know how much that is? Do you see me shaking? And we got it with one payment. One payment. We paid off our car two years early. And so we're going to pay off our, we gonna, our house will be paid for and it will be paid for Eight years early. I won't be like Pat. So, you know, pocket my house note. <laughs> Travel on my house. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean to say that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, uh, and then I want to, he said, I ain't apologizing for being blessed. And I, I'm with you, Pat. I'm with you, Pat. Uh, don't forget on March 18th, uh, I mean, uh, on May 18th, media training. That's the next media training. Now, this, if you want to do this, you need to come because it's going to be a little different. It's a little more. I got to see uh, what, what they're doing. Trust me, what you want to do, you want to pick out one and learn that one because what those two are doing is amazing. It is very, very complex, the stuff that they're doing back there. And then two of them are doing all of that. Well, now we got some help of people who are going to be working with them. So you need to decide, okay, I want to do with sound. I want to do with video. I want to do with cameras. I want to do with lighting. I want to do with, uh, with the messaging or whatever the other stuff. I don't know what all that stuff is called. But he know, see, Ben is a genius. He's smart. He real, real, real Real smart. 
He might, no, I can't say that now. Too many other folk in here. So uh, it's, it's Saturday, May 18th at 9 a.m. here at the Agape. Men of Distinction, Barbecue Fellowship, June 1st at 1 p.m. Uh, and you can, you can give toward that. That's a Saturday. You can give to them. I understand them will be at your house, right? Uh, hunch him and tell him, you know, I'm talking to him. I'm, I'm telling him, wake up there. Cause we're going to be at, uh, we're going to be saving the date. We're going to be at your house. What you say? <laughs> and then uh, I want to encourage you to, to support the block blast, you know, that they, uh, fun and games on August 10, uh, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Fun and games and health fair, school supplies, giveaway, uniforms. We're going to, DJ, face paintings, and a whole lot more called Block. Block Blast, a success. It can be a success by your contributing to the youth ministry. You can give, give by selecting youth ministry category uh, on, our, on our category. Uh, don't forget to support, uh, uh, to join us on, uh, for worship on in-person and virtual worship. I'm telling you, uh, uh, my, my dental hygienist and I, uh, actually my dentist and I were talking about the difference between in-person and video worship and say that yes, you can get the word with video worship, but you don't get the fellowship and you don't get to be in the environment mm -hmm. and there are things that you miss because it cuts off after a certain period and then you, you know, because we used to have those after parties at Oasis. You know, everything go on, and then, you know, and then, you know, after we'd be sitting around and we have a, a Holy Ghost party, man, just an after party, after the service. And, and a lot of people going on, and people just stick around because they're wanting something. That's the day which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, so they shall be filled. And so, happy birthday, Sandra Bolden, uh, which was a couple of days ago. Um, April 14th, and my granddaughter, Jordan White. Uh, tomorrow. What's the day? 17th. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. Good Lord. Don't forget to pray for Deb and I and my, our families. Don't forget to pray for our elders and pray for those who have physical challenges. Pray for our nation. Definitely pray for our nation. Our nation need a line of prayer. And then pray for the peace of Israel. Bible tell us to pray for the peace of uh, uh, Israel. Now, those not, now, I'm going to say this. Uh, those of you who say, well, uh, I don't see why America should be supporting Israel because the Bible says that we should pray for Jerusalem. We should support Israel. What I do not agree with, I do not agree with mass killing of innocent people. I don't agree with that. So I think that there's another way to do that. I understand why it's being done, but I don't agree with it. So, you know, if somebody came in my house, you know, and, and killed one of my kids, uh, they come kill one of my kids, I'm going to want to get them before the police get sick. If I don't get to pray, I'm going to want to get them. I'm going to want to get them. And I want to, and I'm going to want to, I tell you, I, I want to be petty sometimes. And I want to inflict as much pain on them as they cause me. Uh, until God arrests me, until God speaks into my heart and my heart turns to forgiveness. Like uh, the lady yesterday that uh, she said, tell him to turn himself in. Tell him I forgive him for killing her son. That's a big thing, big deal. So, so I want to encourage you to keep praying, keep praying, keep me before him because you, you, as you can tell, I need a lot of work. I bet y'all didn't think I like to be petty. Oh boy, if you knew what I was talking about, if y'all knew what I was talking about, just too bad that y'all don't know. But, the, you know, the board members know, my wife know, and they, they know what I'm talking about, that what, what I'm talking about. That, that, uh, uh, but, man, do I want, man, I want so, I want to, I could just taste it. I want to do it so bad. And so, but I know I can't. So, so but I can think about it. But I won't, I can, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, okay. If you have not already given, I want to give you the privilege to give. If you have not already given uh, and you need more time, say mercy. Otherwise, 
I'm going to pray over our giving. I recognize that even most people who are here in the house, they give online. So, Father, we thank you for the gifts that we're about to, that we are giving, that how we're sowing into for kingdom business. We're giving our tithe, our offering, our gifts of love, uh, our, our building pledge, that we're giving that your house would not lie in waste. We know that when we give, we're giving unto you. And so, Father, we want to represent you in all ways, in our life, in everything we do, and in our houses of worship. We pray, Father, that you continue to bring increases. Patrick taught us increases our covenant right. And we believe, Father, we're in covenant relationship with you. And we have a, a right to have in, increase produced in our life. No lack, no debt, every need met in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. And thank God. All right. Nothing, nobody did that? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Sure, you can make an announcement. May you make an announcement. She has an announcement. Good afternoon, Agape. You know, we have a very special day coming up on 428, which is Shepherd Day. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5 and 7.